Hello, I'm Paul Severson from the Minnesota Institute for Minimally Invasive Surgery. And in 2015, we started the Minnesota Reflux and Heartburn Center. And I'd like to share with you today, how do I successfully market my foregut center based on our experience? I'd like to compliment Liz Dean, our Executive Director of Strategy and Business Development who helped me with the uh, foregut uh, center marketing piece because I'm a surgeon. My disclosures are not pertinent to today's uh, lecture. I'm gonna be talking about Healthcare Marketing 101, and this refers to the seven Ps. Those are product, people, the package, process, promotion, place, and price. Number one, the product. Offer a service line with values that exceed the needs and expectations of the target market. What are the needs of the patient? What is different than the competition? And what is the added value that you offer patients? As far as the needs go, it's fairly obvious. It might be GERD, poorly responsive to PPIs, regurgitation, atypical symptoms, Barrett's and cancer prevention. What's different than the competition? Well, your center might have a comprehensive same day evaluation. What's the added value that you offer patients that other competitors might not? Well, maybe it's concierge level care or all solutions under one roof. So how do we get started? Well, first you have to name the center. You have to create a logo. You should create mottos. Uh, Minnesota Reflux has advanced care, expert team, and latest technologies. Uh, we also have a motto that's Minnesota's first comprehensive treatment center. Number two, the people. We're gonna talk about the customer, in other words, who is your target market, and the team. Who do you need on your team? First, the target market. All across the country, GI centers focus on a lot of things, but when you're gonna market, you wanna focus on uh, a market that's large, like GERD, 40 million people on PPIs. We're going to take active men in their 50s who have tried other heartburn treatments without success and are looking for a one-stop shop with advanced solutions for reflux. We consider professional baseball as the perfect market to be able to go after that particular group. And we use the Minnesota Twins, for example, and produced high-quality television and radio ads based on that target market. It's also important when you do that, that you're marketing to women as they make up 85% of the healthcare decisions for the family. Next, we'll talk about the team. Who is on your team? The people must have technical skills and interpersonal capabilities needed in order to deliver high quality service. The director and the administrator work together to build this team. You have to recruit, hire, train, and then retain the best people possible. This will be the most important predictor of success. And the foregut center nurse coordinator will be the most powerful marketing force that you will be able to retain. He or she is the patient advocate. Selling the center, setting up the evaluations, which is promoting same-day diagnostics and a one-stop shop concept. Same-day diagnostics may separate you from other centers. What we mean by that is being able to do your intake evaluation, your manometry, and your endoscopy with a Bravo all in the same day. She will be expert in overall GERD care and technologies and answer all questions. She'll be the referring physician advocate, and she'll ensure the continuity of care that means she must be available and, aff and affable, and she should be like a nurse navigator in a cancer center. She coordinates all the foregut center meetings and activities. She's really the key person or the center of the center. Next, you build the team. These, this means nurse coordinators. We're fortunate to have two different locations. We have two nurse coordinators, GI lab nurse technicians and two GI labs, dietitians in each facility, nurse practitioners, gastroenterologists, and surgeons. I urge that you be cautious about promoting surgeons in your marketing. Why? Because research shows that people are somewhat afraid of surgeons. 
we refer to them as reflux experts. And once they're in the center and comfortable, we can disclose that we're actually surgeons. We feature the team with interviews uh, by creating a professional video presentation. You can then post it on the website. This can then be used in an edited version for television, movie theaters, radio, live seminars, and virtual webinars. If you're fortunate enough to have a famous guest like Dr. Tom Demeester, make sure you take photo ops with the team, get an interview, get your quotes approved, post it on the website, and then run articles in local media. Promote your team's accomplishments. When they get awards, research publications, speaking engagements, grants, donations, academic promotions, or just hiring the new personnel, promote it. Number three, we'll talk about the package. What, this is what the patient perceives and experiences about your product. It means the physical appearance of the facility, the look and feel of the website, the brochures, and even the appearance of the staff. Does the first impression and the experience exceed expectations? The website should be a top priority. This is what people use, and particularly in the post-COVID world. It may include a virtual tour, which will make your facility look really great. Patient education sections are very important. Uh, these should be robust and should be so uh, enticing that the patient will wanna come to the center. Number four, process or positioning. And positioning means why you? How is your brand and service perceived in the hearts and minds of patients? And what is the specific message that you want others to use in describing your center? What do you really have to do in every patient interaction to get your patients to think and talk about the center in that specific way? So if we wanna position our foregut center, we're gonna to have to have catchphrases that are become part of the culture of the center that everybody embraces. For example, we care about cancer prevention. So during the comprehensive endoscopic evaluation, for example, we might wanna always consider using a serious oncologic assessment. Seattle protocol is not very good. It's inadequately performed. So one study shows 2.6 biopsies for the expected four, or it's not performed at all. The don't biopsy trial is very popular and many GIs, for example, don't biopsy at all unless there's two centimeters of, it, of intestinal visible columnar epithelium or intestinal metaplasia possibly. So you might wanna consider adding additional technologies like Watts 3D and confocal laser under microscopy to get serious about Barrett's detection. Why? Because it influences the decision-making for the physician and the patient. Barrett's makes people very concerned about their future and it might make a difference in terms of them choosing a surgical procedure. So always use narrowband imaging and take photos of this, it's impressive. Review it with the patients after their endoscopy and offer photos to them. Another clinical example would be the summary consultation and taking advantage of this. We have what's called the life plan and we develop that with the patient at this consultation where we bring it all together. It works great in a virtual visit now. First, our nurse practitioner comes in and reviews all the results biopsies, Bravo, manometry, and any other uh, tests. And we can do this very nicely through screen sharing. Next, the surgeon comes in and provides the recommendations. Optimizing medical management, discussing endoscopic interventions, and possible future surgical options. We want patients to understand that we are dedicated to them for their life because this is a lifelong disease. You'll never lose a patient uh, if, you, uh, if you continue to schedule them in the future and you'll spend a lot less on marketing. Testimonials are very powerful. We want these to be posted. We wanna capture them. We wanna put them on social media. And never let a grateful patient get away. Send the grateful patients to the marketing department. Let them capture their quotes, their cards, their letters take photos, put them on the website and social media. Here we've got uh, one of our nurse coordinators uh, receiving a bouquet of flowers from a patient. We don't let that go. We put a little post on that and of course her number and website uh, so that other patients can contact. Number five, promotion. 
This is communicating with the target audience to effectively address needs, present benefits, and inspire action. There's two different types of promotion. The direct personal interaction, which we're all familiar with. This is where we promote on a one-to-one -one basis. This will actually ignite word of mouth marketing better than anything else. And secondly, the interaction with many, which of course is advertising and public relations. You must continuously develop new marketing and advertising strategies to thrive long-term. Now these are the routine advertising channels. And there's many ways in which we can promote our center. But we want to focus uh, on web and digital, uh, as well as social media, because this is, uh, this is exactly where you want to be uh, in the post-COVID environment. It's difficult to do things live, and that's why seminars have to be uh, go live on Facebook. They have to be captured and posted. The promotion plan should include the director promoting the center right back to the administration and healthcare system. People don't think about this, but there's a lot of irons in the fire for administrations. And so they must be included in regular meetings. And I recommend annual reports to remind them of the power of the center. They need to be convinced of the value of their product uh, or service line. And if you can track data, uh, then the director can then demonstrate the utility and profitability of the program every year. This will ensure that marketing appropriation will follow. So this would be software where the uh, procedures are tracked. Uh, this I can show 2015, the inception of our program. Uh, you can see that we had very little in terms of activity, but within two years by 2017, ambulatory pH monitoring, esophageal manometry, and surgical procedures all increased dramatically. We also keep track of the billings trend analysis so that in the beginning in 2015, we could see only 220,000 in billings, but within a year and a half, we're up to 1.7 million in billings, a robust growth. You report that, you're gonna get marketing dollars. Uh, another area of tracking is the referral source. It's very important for choosing your marketing techniques, which are gonna be different from every center. Our center showed a great deal of patients coming through in the first couple quarters through seminars and advertising those seminars. But within a year, we started to see many of the outside physicians referring to the center. Number six, the place. This is presenting services in the right place at the right time. In other words, where is the ideal location? We know the consumers want quick and convenient access. So a hallmark of marketing is location, location, location. But while access is important, location is not important at this time. Why? Because four gut centers are in their infancy, the incidence of poorly treated GERD is overwhelming, and an organized comprehensive approach to GERD is lacking in most communities. This means that patients will come to a quality center regardless of their location. And finally, number seven, price. We're not gonna discuss much about this, but we do want you to support patients with price transparency and particularly with navigating insurance coverage. New technologies are poorly reimbursed commonly, and therefore experts within your center have to help the patients through this process. I want to thank you, and if there's any uh, contact information that is supplied on this slide, please email me, be happy to speak more.